I love this show. I hate this horrible show. I love this wonderful, terrible show. Hello, good morning, BBs. Oh, good morning. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. Oh, We've got such a show. We do. There's actually a, a ton of news going on. There's so many things we're not going to get to today, but we are going to be recapping that Nintendo Direct. Mm -hmm. We got. Uh, we have the Erd Tree. Finally. Finally, we know when the Erd Tree is coming, and we have seen the Erd Tree. And I know not the meanings of any of this because I haven't played Elden Ring. And actually, and there's a. Um, you might think that it's uh, 2011 because there is so much Borderlands news. There's Borderlands and crazy taxi news. <sighs> what year is it? it was, it's sometime between 2001 and 2011 for sure. Okay, I can confirm that it's this year because there's also celebrities and Fortnite news. Mm, okay. Uh, but we'll get to all of that. And at some point, we have to talk about Mr. Beast, which constantly does remind me of the year that we are actually in. But I, first, oh sorry, I don't. We don't have. We don't have to talk about. Mr. I wanna. Beast. We don't have to. I know. Ugh. I know. But I want to. All right, uh, Anthony. Sage. Before we get into the news, I have a question for you. Yes. Does this woman look like Megan Fox? No. Take a minute. Sit with it. No. She doesn't look like Megan. Okay. Fox. If you weren't looking at Megan Fox. No. Here's okay. <laughs> I. She does. Here's the thing. She does her eye makeup the same way Megan Fox does, and she has blue eyes. I think that and she doesn't do her eye makeup the same. Look at these makeup. Well, that's Megan Fox on like a... She doesn't look like Megan Fox. I'm trying to give her some credit here. From there up... Okay. Kind of? If you cover the bottom half? If you cover the bottom half, kind of. So picture it in this way. You know how people are always like, oh, what celebrity do I look like? Or yeah. like when other people tell you you look like a celebrity and you're like, no, I don't. Yes. Do you think it would be in any way reasonable for people to say to her, Megan Fox, like her friends? <sighs> do you think her friends would tell her she looks like Megan Fox? I'm sure a friend or a coworker did one day when she was having a bad day. Do you know what I mean? Rough, rough. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? It's like, hey, yeah. you know, you're, you're like, mean, you tough, look like, yeah. you look like Megan Fox. Yeah. You're so, you don't even, don't worry about him. You look like Megan Fox, girl. I think she, I kind of see it. I can, like, I can kind of see it, but. I can kind like of if see you were, it. Like if she said yeah. to me, uh huh, people always say I look like Megan Fox. I'd be like, oh yeah, I could see it. Okay, right, I'd right. Be like, sure, I could sure. see it. Sure, yeah. Would you be being polite though? It would be, it would be about 50% polite yeah. and 50% I could see it. So. Because I understand sometimes people like tell other people they look like celebrities. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like how you are every redhead. Yeah, Alonzo just said that in the chat and said Sage is every redheaded actress. Yeah, I get pictures of every dude that's ever had a beard. Yeah, and it's I like, get also every orange haired girl in a video game. Yeah, of course. Which I think is more accurate than most of the redheads because I do think most of the time when they draw someone with orange hair in video games, it does kind of look like me. Yeah, I just, and the thing is, I just have the um, the default character select haircut for white guys right yeah. now. Yeah. So I just have that and a beard. And so people are just like, Here's a guy that looks like you. I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah. So, oh, thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> I have no ability to tell when people look like celebrities. Mm -hmm. I never, I never look at people and go, wow, they look, unless it is like identical. Well, unless yeah. it is like unreasonable, <laughs> unless it's the like three celebrities that look all like Katy Perry. I'm like, mm -hmm. I see that, I get it. But like most of the time, I've never looked at somebody and been like, you look like Blank celebrity. I think people look more work like, like that. I think people looked more like celebrities, maybe like thirty years ago, before celebrities got so much work done. That's a valid point. And so, like, you could see more of people's genetic backgrounds yeah. in their faces. Yeah. Now, I think when people look like celebrities, particularly here in LA, and people go, "Oh my gosh, you look like a celebrity," it just means they have the same surgeon, right? Or they went and they picked the same nose off right. the rack. Well, there's a thing going viral right now because there is a supermodel that just like popped up in like a proper fashion show of some kind. And I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea the context of this. Mm -hmm. um, that looks a lot like Bella Hadid. No, Gigi Hadid. The first Hadid. Sure. The older Hadid. The Hadid first of her name. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, there's the very famous mother Hadid. First of their name. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gigi Hadid, I think is the older one. The sure. more famous one. Okay. 
model, very famous. Yes. Um, another model has popped up that looks just like her. Mm -hmm. But I got a TikTok about it the other day, and the only reason it came up in my feed is they're saying the Hadid had all the work done to look like that, and this person, that's just her face. Mm. Uh, but a bunch of people are like upset because they're like, oh, you guys are just using this person because they look like blank Hadid. Wait. Uh, and they're like, no, that's you, just her face. Are you telling me that they hire models because all models look almost exactly the same. Not all there models, are, Anthony. There are, like four, there are like four different types of models Yeah, for the runway. If you've ever watched America's Next Top Model, you do know there are only four because on makeover week, you know you're gonna have to fit into one of them. Yeah, there are only you're four You're getting types. your teeth shaved, okay? There are if four kinds of models. If you're not in one of, of the four. Um, so going back to this woman. The other, the other time that you can tell that mm -hmm. like when people look like other people where you're like, oh my gosh, that model looks like blank. Yeah. Or that actor looks like blank. Uh, it's because of nepotism, and that's just the person's daughter or son. Yeah, that happens a lot in Hollywood, too. It's just their offspring. Yeah. And it's just like, wow, they look exactly like... I remember there was a model that popped up all of a sudden recently, and everybody was like, wow, she looks exactly like Cindy Crawford. <laughs> Do you remember Cindy Crawford? She looks almost exactly yeah. like Cindy Crawford. And it's like, oh, no, that's Cindy Crawford's daughter. Cindy Crawford is 55 now. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Zelda Williams has recently been in a bunch of interviews, Robin Williams' daughter, mm -hmm. uh, because she directed Lisa Frankenstein. Um, right. She looks just like him. Well, she wears the jumpsuit from Mork and Mindy on all <laughs> that. Yeah, interviews. that also probably, like, skews your perspective yeah, on so it a little really bit. Yeah, so she's really highlighting it. But, like... Man, she's got a copy paste of Robin Williams' face. She does. She looks. She looks a lot like him. It's. I remember. It's thinking, neat. Do you remember they had the heartwarming Zelda commercial together? They did a Zelda 3DS commercial together, yeah. and uh, because he named her Zelda after mm -hmm. the game. Yeah. And uh, I remember thinking when, because I think that was the first time any of us ever saw her really. Yeah. Uh, I remember thinking, wow, she looks exactly like him. Yeah, she does, and she sounds like him too. Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay, so to go she back, she also does the Mork voice. Yeah, to go back to this woman from Love Is Blind. Mm -hmm. So this was on the reality Netflix dating show Love Is Blind. Now you say, okay, if she said, people tell me that I look like Megan Fox, you'd be like, I could see it, right? Yeah. Now, if you had, <laughs> wait, now wait, <laughs> Love Is Blind is the show where they don't get to see each other. Mm -hmm. until they decide to be with one another. To be married to, to each other, married. in fact. So, you are not seeing somebody, yeah. talking to them, and this person the whole time is telling you, I look like Megan Fox. Now, that's blown out of proportion because the internet is taking it like that. The actual clip, what okay. actually happened, is they were talking about like celebrity lookalikes, essentially. Okay. And she said, I don't really see it, but people tell me I look like Megan Fox. Okay. Which like is so reasonable. That's that's a very reasonable way to say it. But if someone is dating you through a wall and can't see you, especially right. a man on the other side of that well, wall, that's what I'm saying. Expects it, now to get Megan Fox. You're given one. You're given one hint, one major hint. Yeah, and you're running the, with that. The average person, you know, no, none of us have much person, like much not personality, much imagination. <laughs> but a lot of us don't have personalities either. It's, it's proud of the problem with that show. Yeah, not 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 a lot of us have personalities or imagination. Yeah. And so if you hear. A lot of people tell me I look like Megan Fox. I don't see it. Uh -huh. And that's the only thing you hear for two weeks that as, you are, as you are running with that and running with that. And in your head, it just becomes more and more, and she looks like Megan Fox. That dude is on the other side of that wall, absolutely rubbing his gribby little fingers together. Yeah. Like, ooh, she looks like Megan Fox. Because here's the thing. As someone who watches Love is Blind every season and hates this show, <laughs> I love this show. I hate this horrible show. I love this wonderful, terrible show. Yeah. The men are always wanting to know what they look like. All of the women on the other side are really trying. Some of them, some of them will go for it, but most of the time the women are like, I really want to commit to this experiment. Right. I really do. I don't want to know anything about what you look like. I don't know what, I don't want to know what your race is. I don't want to know how tall you are. Like, <laughs> Meanwhile, the dudes on the other side, you remember that clip from Love is Blind that came out that was like, you sound black. Yeah. A hundred percent. Literally, I just watched, uh, I just finished <laughs> the first two episodes. I was like, are you black? You sound black. He really did say that. It was awful. There was a man this season, there is a man this season, because the season is still ongoing, um, that literally, like, I mean, it's been days. They're, like, connecting. They're getting to the point where people are starting to, like, get ready to propose and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, I do need to make sure that I'll be um, sexually attracted to you. And <laughs> she was like, what does that mean? Like, what? And he was just like, yeah. And she's like, so are you looking for something specific? And he was like, yeah, kind of. 
I do really like like petite women and like, you know, lips are an important feature to me. And then is asking her to describe what she looks like through the wall. But describe it slow and naked. And like, <laughs> sir, there's so many dating shows. You went on Love is Blind. Buddy. There, every other dating show is the horny dating show. Yeah, go on Love Island, exactly. Skywalker's like, go on Love Island or Too Hot to Handle. Dude, He's not hot enough to get on Too Hot to Handle. Go, um, every other dating show them, is the horny dating show. Yep. Is the horny drunk dating show. Yeah. You chose to go on the one that is not the horny drunk dating show. Yeah, there are two shows that are not for this guy. Married at First Sight, Love is Blind. Also, the whole point of the show is, it doesn't matter what your type is. Exactly, the whole, the whole point. point. Is, the whole point is, don't worry about your type. Right. Maybe by worrying about your type, you've been uh, ignoring people who are right for you. Your type has not been working out for you, and that's why you signed up to marry a stranger, you fucking weirdo. Yeah, you dated everyone you could, and now you have to date through a wall, you weird. <laughs> yeah. You, we will only let you date people through a wall now, you <laughs> fucking weird. Which should be considered an early <laughs> step in probation. Yeah. I really do think that most of these men, I think at some point, we have to let... <sighs> You know how sometimes they bring in mediums to like mm -hmm. try and solve crimes? He doesn't like mediums. He only likes petites. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think that we should bring in the Love is Blind casting directors to pre-identify men that should go to prison. Sure. I think that if they get selected by the Love is Blind casting director, somebody rolls in Chris Hansen style and goes, why don't you sit down? Sure. <laughs> uh, and just immediately takes them to prison. Yes. There are a lot of those. There are also, uh, there are a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of women on Love is Blind where it's like, I'm begging you to speak to a, a friend, relative, or therapist once. Oh, yeah. Just once. Yeah. I am I am begging you to just sit, and, sit with your own thoughts for five seconds. Yeah. There's, I've never seen a bigger collection of people who should be wearing ankle bracelets. Yeah. And people who should- Be in therapy. Be like, yeah, like, hey. Like multiple days a week therapy. Bring back- Let's bring back clonopin in a big way for some of these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go all the way back to lithium for some of these yeah. people. You know what Look, I mean? I'll go as far as to say some of these need a nice little house by the sea. Yeah. <laughs> you know? let's, let's, the sea air will be good for you, the darling. The sea air will be good for you, darling. Let's send you away <laughs> for a little bit uh, to deal with Perhaps this. Perhaps the rigors of the city are not for you, my love. It's really <laughs> wild. And I tweeted about this yesterday because I was like, what? the experience of watching Love is Blind is watching... Uh, immediately identifying three men that are criminals. Like they just have to be criminals. I don't care. Mm -hmm. They are violent, dangerous criminals and yeah. they haven't shown it yet, but I know it. I absolutely know it. A relative gave them a ride to Love is Blind. And then, <laughs> and then watching the most beautiful women fall in love with them for the most mediocre shit on the planet. Mm -hmm. A guy will be like, I was thinking about you today. And they're like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck here behind a wall and there's nothing to do and they don't even give me a Game Boy and I thought about you. <laughs> like it's <laughs> wild. Anyways, the new season's fucking bananas. Uh good morning, Alex. Do, yeah, good morning, Alex. Do you think she looks like Megan Fox? I don't. I don't at all. Like I can see No. It's sort no. of, it's sort of <laughs> eyes Sorry. bridge of the nose yeah. and the way she styles herself a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I try not to be in the business of comparing women's features to other women's features. Right. So maybe, oh, wow. Okay. okay. It turns out I'm Alex just, is the best of us. Yeah, that's true. Oh, it turns out we're assholes and Alex is the <laughs> best of us. Wow. Thanks, Alex. We'll talk. We'll come back to you later, bud. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Here's the thing. We're never going to compare if she doesn't compare. She made the comparison and now the whole internet is judging for her for it. And I'm saying, I kind of see it. I kind of get it. And she made a TikTok because obviously this is all over for them. They they did this a year ago. Mm -hmm. And she made a TikTok, now having the entire internet blow up over it, that said, now would be a really good time for any of the people that told me I look like Megan Fox to come forward. <laughs> you know what? I got that TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I saw that TikTok. That's her. She was like, now would be a really good time for any of the people but, that told me that to say it. But can I tell you what? I thought that was a separate woman making a TikTok about the situation because she said, because she starts off by going like, let's say that I said, mm -hmm. I look like Megan Fox. Yeah. 
if I had said that I looked like Megan Fox, now would be a great time. And so I thought she was comparing that situation, being like, where are this woman's friends? Because she looks that little like Megan Fox. Well, well. Listen. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Listen. The important thing to take away from that is that we're bad people. I'm saying I see it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> And that makes me better. I don't know if that makes you better, but it does. okay. I've got her back. Look. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> now, did I say that some of the women on Love is Blind should be sent away to a little resort by the sea? Yes. <laughs> and they should. Look. The problem is. It's a little, look, look. It's a little bit on dating shows. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit yellow wallpaper. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It is a little bit these I mean I'm not saying that it comes from nowhere. I'm saying these are these are clearly uh people that have been mistreated yeah, and these have been are manufactured like, circumstances. Yeah, and they have been like turned into yeah. uh these sort of people that have like they're just dating minefields. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, they did that's why they get on the show. Yeah. And you know, I'm not saying that everybody starts off that way or does it to themselves, but um it has happened. It has happened. And We've ended up there. Yeah. Regardless. And the problem is not that these people are dating minefields. I wish them all the luck in the world. The mm -hmm. problem is that we have created a culture that is um we should make shows continuously yeah. where we put these people with so many triggers yeah. <laughs> into exactly their trigger situations. I <laughs> desire so greatly a queer season of Love is Blind. Now, the people who make Love is Blind also make the ultimatum and we got the queer ultimatum. So mm -hmm. it has to be in the works, right? Because here's the thing, lesbians falling in love through a wall it would change everything. I think it just works. It'd be a beautiful show. It really just works. It would be a beautiful show. The ultimatum is a nightmare, but I really do think. I've seen lesbian friends fall in love over three text messages. Yeah. Like it doesn't, like, like it doesn't take much. The whole concept too of like, oh, well after this you get married? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. I really, 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 really want it because you know what I'm tired of seeing? So in the show, they have like the men's quarters and the women's quarters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where they all live together through all this. And then during the day, they go do their little dates and then they come back. And every time I just look at all of the women, like in the very beginning before it gets competitive, where they're all like having so much fun together. And there's always a few of them that like group off and like don't find a man in this and are just like, yeah, like, you know, I just like, help her style her hair every morning and we do our little workouts together yeah. and I'm just like, do you kiss? Are you gonna, what if, do you wanna, don't you think you guys were having more fun in the beginning when you weren't, when there wasn't men? Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I did like about the first season of too hot to handle, I don't watch too hot to handle anymore, mm -hmm. but one of the reasons, one of the things I liked about the first I seasons do. of too hot to handle is that they made them go on activities that were supposed to better them. And they're like, yeah. just, Hang out. Yeah. Don't think about sex or dating for one for minute. For one minute. Be friends with people. Yeah. See if that does something for you. Yeah. See where we get with that. See where we get with that. Yeah. It's it has gotten a lot less of that, unfortunately. No. And it, the the whole reason Love is Blind or not Love is Blind, Too Hot to Handle worked so well is mm -hmm. that the first season literally happened during the lockdown. Yeah. And it was like These everybody was like, "Oh, yeah. you can't touch each other. That's so <laughs> sad." <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> I wear a mask to go to the vending machine. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, is anybody else watching Love is Blind? I would love to hear your thoughts because, man, I think this might be the the most frightening season I yet. still, I keep thinking about lesbian Love is Blind and it's like, it's like just first day I one talking wait. through the wall. It's just like, what's your favorite color? Blue. Do you want to move in together? I can't wait. Do you want to... I love it. Should we live together? All these straight people are so slow and boring. <laughs> Every one of them, like a man says like, well, I have a mother and they're like, he's so emotional. Wow. Wow. He's got so many complex thoughts meanwhile, and feelings. He meanwhile, has a mother. Lesbian love is blind is just like, do you want to move in together? Yeah, sure. We, you want to use my U-Haul punch card? You, your U-Haul punch card? Like, yeah. what, what, are we, what are we doing? Yeah. I uh, got a truck. Do you have a flatbed? Let's, would be, let's go. I think there would be genuine, beautiful conversations between the walls. I think it would be lovely. Queer Love is Blind, I'm calling it next season. That's what I think. If is they hadn't room, done is, Queer Ultimatum, I wouldn't think so. All we need to figure out is, are there, is there room for your plants next to my plants? Right. Let's go. Yeah. How much, great into a bigger space. Yeah. How much natural light are we getting? Yeah. <laughs> Jelly PB said, your Subaru or mine. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, there is too much hetero content. I agree, flannel fries. We've simply had enough. <laughs> You've had your time, okay? <laughs> All right, give us a break. Just give us, we're not even asking to have it forever, but give us a fucking break. You guys are exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why do I keep watching it? All right, let's get into some of the news. Sure. What do you want to start with? Elden Ring or Nintendo? I mean... We should let's talk real quick about the uh, about the Elden Ring. All right, let's erg tree it. Yeah, uh, the biggest thing that we got in this uh, in this Shadow of the Erd Tree trailer is we got our uh, we got our reveal of the launch date, which I have already promptly forgotten because I'm good like that. Mm. It is June uh, June twenty first. That's We're so exciting. It. It's um, it's pricey. How much is it? It's a pricey. It's a pricey DLC. How much for this DLC? I believe it's going to be about forty dollars for Ooh, this DLC. Oh, that's a pricey DLC. I believe it's going to be a, a chunky, uh, pricey DLC. So, uh, oh. you know, there better be a lot of uh, the shadow of the Erd Tree. Better be far reaching. It sounds like you're saying it in like the Goosebumps meme voice. The Erd Tree. Yeah. Or my Gerd, the Erd Tree. <laughs> 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 and the name looks like a typo. <laughs> Sage, yeah. have some respect for the Erd tree, which brings life to all of the land. Oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, it looks really good. I, I hope there's a lot of um I hope there's a lot of content for that 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. The the narration on this trailer is such Elden Ring narration. Uh-huh. Like it, it's just like uh, Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive the clean, the hearts of men. Sure. There's people growing out of eggies because, of course, because it's Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of fingies. I'm I hope there's long fingers. I hope there's $40 worth of fingies in there. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I saw that I really loved is there is um, apparently some one of the new character types or one of the new uh, kind of things that you can do with your character is just like anime jump flip kicks. Hell yeah. Which I think belong in every game. That's fun. It looks really good. Uh, they did not show off a ton mm -hmm. or talk much about it because of course, all beneath the Erd tree is shadowed in circrecy. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, yeah. it's everybody, their bodies are really big, their heads are really long. Yeah. They're coming out of eggies. Elden Ring is one of those games that I'm like, oh, someday I will go back and play it, but I needed all of the hype to pass first. Yeah. Well, because when it comes right down to it, mm -hmm. uh, it is the best of these games, mm -hmm. but it is another one of these games. Yeah. And if you're not somebody who is a huge Souls person, mm -hmm. like there's a little wormy guy, like we love a little wormy guy who eat you. Sure. Look at all those toesies. That's that's real Souls right there. Yeah. Um, if you're not somebody who goes nuts for these games, mm -hmm. playing it during the hype cycle will literally make you go, this is another one of these games. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's overwhelming to me. Yeah. I want to play it and I don't want to tell anybody. You know what I mean? I don't want any questions. Yeah. I don't like the like, well, where are you at? And have you gotten to this part? And I get it. Like, that's a fun part of video game community things for me, but it's not fun for me on a Souls like. Yeah. Especially this one, which is uh, the first one that's truly like really open world expansive. And so everybody's doing things in different orders. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, have you fought this? Have you? It's like, guys, please stop telling me everything that's going to happen yeah. in the Fingy game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to know everything that's going to happen in the Fingy game. I need to go unjudged for it. Uh, but it is it is the best. Of, it's not my favorite of them. My yeah. favorite is still Bloodborne. Yeah. I still, that's the case for, I think, most people. I yeah. still don't know. I mean, I there... That trailer. I, I still don't know mm -hmm. why, why, why we haven't just gotten the 60 FPS unlocked version of Bloodborne. Yeah. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. I know it's because they're working on the Fingy game. Right. And they got a lot, they're all hands on Fingies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but get, get Blue Point in there to, to do that. You bought Blue Point for a reason, Sony. Yeah. They already did a Demon's Souls. Give me my Bloodborne. There are, I mean, everybody has their favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm of the Bloodborne type, but I think for a lot of people, it's like, original souls flavor mm -hmm. is there is is like the predominant favorite or there are some people that are even like no all of them are fake compared to demon souls and those people can get over themselves um <laughs> somebody said i wish i was good enough at games to play this game uh i need to find an easy mode mod now if i remember correctly dark souls was the first of the souls games to have difficulty settings wasn't it didn't they do it 
I remember the there being a discussion one? about it. Uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, Elden Ring was, not Dark Souls. Yeah, Elden Ring. Elden Ring was the first of them. Yeah. Um, Here's the other thing about, about Souls and difficulty. It's mostly, um, it's mostly a facade. Mm-hmm. It really is. The, the thing that makes Souls games hard mm-hmm. is you're dropped into the middle of a game that you know nothing about and the yeah. game is bad at explaining itself to you. <laughs> right, it's a lot of world. Uh, but really all it is is just block and slash. Mm-hmm. Block at the right time, slash at the right time. And like, that and is a skill. And you'll get it. And that is a skill. But you'll get it. Yeah. You know, but I think the difficulty has been hyped up so much. Yeah in these games because they underpower your character right. and they make you learn timing. Right. But once you do that, and you can, honestly, something that you don't see with like a lot of soul streamers or players or mm-hmm. in reviews is the number of hours people spend running away. <laughs> yeah. Like honestly, when you first jump into a new Souls game, a lot of your time is spent running away. Yeah. And that's totally valid. You're playing the game correctly. Mm-hmm. But people don't, don't think that because they'll like watch a soul streamer who's like, this is my 18th new game plus, 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 plus. Sure. I'm playing with, uh, of course, I'm using the ring of forsaken moss yeah. with my uh, with my eye pebble of the crying weepers. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of a complex build. I wouldn't start with that. I'd try with like a plus three shoes of the fallen. Of course. And you you hear shit like that. And Good you're start. Like, and you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Guy? Just pick a dude and slash and block. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And in Bloodborne, you get to do it while uh, while it's in uh, plague times. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. That's cool. It's gothic plague times. $40 is too much for a DLC for a game that you paid $70 for. I think that's absolutely absurd and astronomical. I think it depends on the amount of content we're looking at. At that point, if it's $40, make me a new game. I mean, well, I mean, that's a great dis- that's that's a great discussion to have, right? Like you think about things like this. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom started in a Mario Galaxy two way, mm-hmm. where it was going to be, here's the final DLC, yeah. for uh, Breath of the Wild, and then you made so much game, yeah. that you're like, actually, this is another game. Yeah. Mario Galaxy two was the same thing, yep, where it was just like, damn, we we just keep making levels and making levels, yeah. Let's just make a new game. But I'm if happy I can to have get this, yeah. the amount of content or almost the amount of content right. that I get from a new game yeah. and I get it for a discounted price, yeah, that's kind of cool. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I mean, I, I think- That's $40 is too much. It's a lot, but- $40 is just too much. I think it's a bad precedent to set that you can charge $40 for DLC. I just think that that's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I don't think, and I and I don't think you can charge it for all DLC no. or or most DLC. But if this game is almost mm-hmm. a full Elden Ring, yeah, which we don't know if it is, but if it's right. almost a full Elden Ring, do you for, think it is for discounted forty bucks? I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm you know, I'm waiting to hear more. Yeah. But if this adds, if this added another like twenty hours to Elden Ring, uh huh, would that be worth forty dollars? As not an Elden Ring player, I can't well, say. Well, imagine a game that you really love. Yeah. Um, if the main game was like, if you played a game that was like 60 hours long. Yeah. Yeah, let's do a Baldur's Gate. Let's right. do a Baldur's Gate. If you played 60 hours of Baldur's Gate and then they were like, hey, mm-hmm. uh, new little mini campaign for Baldur's Gate. Yeah. It's gonna add an additional 20, 20 hours right. for 40 bucks. Well, here's the problem. When you use Baldur's Gate as an example, you can literally point to the fact that Baldur's Gate keeps doing that for free. I know. I know, but that's the comparison is it's not that it's not valuable, but if other studios are also doing it for free, Right. Or for much less money. Well, because they're not going to be the first people to ever make a big DLC. You know no. what I mean? So it's like, okay, well, comparatively, did you maybe make too much then where you couldn't make it DLC priced? Well, we, okay. So we can compare it very easily to, to something different, mm-hmm. which on the, on the exact opposite side of the spectrum, which is Cyberpunk. Yeah. Cyberpunk released President Id- Idris Elba DLC or whatever. Yes. Idris Elba says killed the president or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Knuckles is there. McCavity is there. Sure. Yeah. Um, and they released that for 40 bucks. Mm-hmm. And it was supposedly like not just a big uh, story update, but a big gameplay update. Yeah. And to that, to that update, I said, eat shit. Yeah. I didn't order that update because I did not like Cyberpunk to begin with. And I yeah. didn't want to pay $40 for them to fix their game. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in between the Cyberpunk of it and the Larian of it. Yeah. There is an Elden Ring. Yeah. And Elden Ring is great. And mm-hmm. we all love Elden Ring. Yeah. And it was like five years, six years between Bloodborne and Elden Ring. Yeah. If this means we get an additional 
20 hours mm -hmm. of good from soft content. You think you think 40, for 40 bucks? bucks. Is worth it. Yeah. I would pay it. Yeah, okay. I would pay it. Right. I think so. Yeah. It's a little I I would be much more comfortable and this is so weird because mm -hmm. it's always so weird when we're when we're haggling hours to content to value. Like mm -hmm. it's a strange way to commodify art yeah. or creativity, but mm -hmm. I am like you where I think $40 is is a decent chunk of money. Mm -hmm. If they said this was coming out for 30, I'd be like, shit, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think we're just getting into a point that's a little too high to me for D for DLC or expansion content. And I think that, I don't know, it's just tough when other people are doing it not at those prices. Like I yeah. think Larian is an excellent example of that. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of people are bringing up some some service games and some mm -hmm. online things like uh, Destiny, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where every time there's an update for something like a Destiny or a Final Fantasy 14 or yeah. any of those games, it's like, congratulations on paying $50. Yeah. There are arguments to be made that it's a different medium. Yeah. You know, and particularly, I was just thinking about like something like Genshin, mm -hmm. where, you know, every couple of weeks I drop $10 into Genshin. Yeah. They're making I more. I think that's a problem too. I think it's a problem too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if people are dropping money into Fortnite skins and battle passes and things like that, yeah. obviously everything is getting more and more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. But there's something to me about, and it feels so weird, mm -hmm. but there's something to me that, feels better at this point of handing somebody a fixed amount of money and mm -hmm. knowing what I'm getting out of it. And that's fair. Isn't that weird? Isn't that no, weird that I we're there? It. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things where it's like, we talk a lot about how bloated the um, budgets for these games are getting. And I'm like, this to me is just a consequence of that. Yeah. Because they spent so much making it, they're charging $40 for it. And it's just one of those things where it's like, if we don't wrangle in these budgets, like games are just gonna become uh, unaccessible. Oh, we're getting, you know, we're getting back up into the into the 79.99 range right. for new games now, which is nobody can afford that. Yeah. And honestly, the the game pass of it all mm -hmm. is forcing up the prices yeah. Yeah. of games that you buy because uh, uh games that go on to Game Pass are making like bottom tier profits. It's Is it too early to go back to Ronald Reagan this episode? No, it's not. It's all Ronald Reagan's fault. It's all Ronald Reagan's fault. It's all Ronald Reagan's fault. There's no manufactured scarcity. Is is a fucking garbage thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Ronald Reagan looks like a like an Elden Ring bad guy. Yeah. If you put Ronald Reagan into like a robe, like yeah. a long dark robe, absolutely. And Ronald like Ronald Reagan came up to you in a swamp. Yeah. And he was like, ah. The true secret of wealth is to simply keep making product. Ugh, eventually, all the money will flow back to you, maidenless. Now, here's my thing. If somebody made a mod where I got to beat up Ronald Reagan, I'd play Elden Ring. Do you remember they made a Call of Duty where it looked like you were going to go after Ronald Reagan and instead Ronald Reagan was the hero? No. It looked so close. I remember there was a Ronald Reagan DLC for one of the for one of the modern warfares. And when it came out, I was like, holy shit, are we going after Reagan? God, that'd be awesome. But no, it wasn't Reagan. It was Reagan yeah. sending you to blow up the Kremlin or something. Yeah. Wow. I, I thought right when they said Ronald Reagan, I was like, cool, new zombie mode. Right. Because <laughs> even when that dude was alive, he looked like one. Yeah. I would love. I would love a mod that lets me take out uh, you know, Ronald and Nancy. Uh, talk to you listen to the live studio audience says swamp monger Ronaldus of the trickle <laughs> <laughs> that's good oh yeah I want to go for both of them and I want Nancy's whole family too that's right <laughs> Nancy Reagan swallows you whole like that big like that big worm guy I mean it feels like that every day <laughs> that's what every day in capitalism feels like <laughs> oh shit. here's a reminder Nancy Reagan notorious horrible fascist racist um, um, as well. Just as a reminder, I just feel like we got to throw that in there too. All right. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Moving on to Reagan's. Uh, <laughs> from let's, let's do uh, opposite vibe game release. Yeah. Opposite vibe game release this morning. Nintendo finally got our emails. Doug Bowser got all of the threats that yeah. I've been sending him and I have been sending him threats because they continually do Nintendo directs either immediately after our show or on days we're off. Right, so uh, today mm -hmm. they they did a solid and they did uh, a Nintendo Direct at 6 a.m. Bright and early, thank Br you so much. Thank you so much, Nintendo, uh, for, for answering with a real monkey's paw situation. 
Um, he saw it. Damn it, he saw it. He saw it. Let's Shit, see it. Cut let's to see the Alex it. cam. Yeah, let's see it, Alex. They did not. They did. They did. We were going to surprise Tell Alex because we knew him, he hadn't seen the direct. Okay, well, I have been talking constantly, constantly to Sage and Anthony about how when I was home uh, for the holidays, I found my family's old Wii and I started replaying Epic Mickey. And I've been saying to everyone that I just want a new Epic Mickey so bad. We yeah. were literally talking about this at lunch. Yes, like constantly, every week. And they're they're making Disney Epic Mickey rebrushed. They're we, remastering Epic Mickey. Yeah, we literally sat at lunch the other day. Yeah. Because like, uh, Alec, Alex so and I excited. both into Epic Mickey. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were talking about if we were to play Epic Mickey now, what is the best way to play Epic Mickey when you're replaying it? Like, do we want to emulate it? Do we want to get the, like the, the Wii U version? Or like, yeah. what do we want to do to play Epic Mickey? Uh, and the answer I think has finally has finally come. Yeah. Epic Mickey on the Switch. Uh, not the biggest announcement of the Direct, but certainly a big one. I'm very excited for this because that means, listen, I know it doesn't mean anything, mm -hmm. but one of the things that we've been talking about, Alex and I, mm -hmm in our Epic Mickey huddles that we have yeah. literally every day, uh -huh. is why aren't they continuing? Yeah. And one of the things that we were talking about is, man, it seems like it was really recent, but Epic Mickey was like 10 years ago. Yeah. So kids today don't know Epic Mickey. Right. So you can't do Epic Mickey 3. But if you remaster it on the Switch and, and then you get to well, test the response. You can hand it off to a new developer. Yep. I think there are a lot more I think they're more loosey goosey now with mm -hmm. with their uh, with the Mickey IP than they were. Yes, I like agree. Epic Mickey was before those new Mickey Mouse shorts mm -hmm. and all like kind of the strange stuff they did with Mickey. Mm -hmm. You could really make a fucking cool Epic Mickey light yeah. versus dark. Am I cool or am I just like kind of full of myself because I'm the I'm the cool guy Mickey Mouse? Yeah, like ooh, but also just more Oswald content is really all I want. Yes, of course, I know. I love Oswald. I know you do. Um, so that was uh, not the only kind of like classic or older game news. Uh, one of the things people are most excited about is the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. Yeah, now this is cool. Mm -hmm. um, this is the original Battlefront and Battlefront 2. Mm -hmm. um, it's also coming to Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation, but the original Battlefront, mm -hmm. 64 player online, which yeah. is going to be supported in the new version, which at the time, the amount of online that Battlefront was on the Xbox, yeah. we, our minds were blown. Oh yeah. Like houses had just gotten broadband. Unbelievable. You plugged in your Xbox to the fast internet you just got, the yeah. internet that you got for stealing songs. Right. And all of a sudden, you were playing in a 64 person Star War? Yeah. Bonkers. Love Battlefront. Love this. Uh, it looks like classic Battlefront. Yeah. Uh, this is not like a remake of the game. It's upscaled. They, yeah. you know, they they cleaned it up a little bit, but yeah, not a remake. No. An upscale a little bit, but like for the most part, they're pretty. They're pretty chunky old graphics. Yeah. They they did, you clearly you can see they didn't add any lighting. They don't yeah. care about shadows. No. Textures are fine the way they are. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, but. 64 player mm -hmm. Battlefront. Yeah. And Battlefront 2. In. All the way in. Absolutely. 100% in. How much how much did you get to play the original one? Did oh, I played you, it. You yeah. Played a lot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um because man, when you were playing that hero mode, yeah. and like you and all your friends and everybody is their favorite Star Wars character, yeah, fighting against everybody Incredible. else. Oh my god. Unmatched. It's so good. And I mean, it says a lot about the new ones. Like, I love the new ones. Yeah. But there is just something about the old ones. Oh, yeah. That they they just got so right. And I can't, I can't wait. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's like, it hits the nostalgia that Star Wars has to hit in a way that some of the newer games weren't hitting yet. Yeah. And like, we're in a new phase of Star Wars games now where we're getting into things that are just like incredible games. But like- you have to cherish that like, oh my God, I'm in Star Wars feeling that you mm -hmm. had when you played those first games. I think they they were also a little on the design side, they were broken in a way that isn't isn't 
It isn't broken. It was early game design. Yes. Like when you think about the new Battlefront games mm -hmm. and you're talking about the hero mode, like hero mode is is like you 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 get shot as a stormtrooper, mm -hmm. and if you get a lucky respawn, you respawn as Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And then for one for one moment, yeah. you get to be Luke Skywalker and you get to mow down as many people right. until you get uh until you get fragged again and then you respawn as like mm -hmm a droidica or yeah. something, you know? Whereas like in the old games, they were just like, well, everybody can be a Jedi if they want at the same yeah. time. Cause they were like, who cares about balance? Yeah. I've never heard about that, especially in relation to the force. Right. And definitely not in gameplay. <laughs> no. So you got 18 people that are all like, well, we're all Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't we all be Yoda? It's like it's like playing uh Goldeneye where it's just go it's just slaps only or golden guns only. Yeah. It's just Yoda's only. Yeah. Battlefront 2 Yoda's Oop, only. Yeah. Oops all Yodas. I can't wait. Let's talk about what else was at the Nintendo Direct though, because that was far from the only announcement in it. Uh we got a lot of fun trailers for games. Uh another crab's treasure. I'm so hype. For this game, so, I've been waiting on this game. These devs only make games about crabs. That's not true, they did make Going Under, but they are the devs behind Agro Crab. Mm -hmm. So have you played Agro Crab, Anthony? Yeah. So, um, so Agro Crab is the name of the studio as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah their yeah. first game was, but they had, I think is their first game. Yeah, but they had they made that Souls-like crab game and then they made the crab fighting game. I the believe. crab, yeah, there was like a party game yeah. of it. Um, I love that they've doubled down on crabs. Yeah. Going Under was an amazing game and it was about a, it was literally about a game studio that you are an intern at. Yeah. Uh, that is going under and you've got to like save the game studio. Yeah, fighting and capitalism. Fighting capitalism. And uh, it was great, but nobody played it. And yeah. then they were like, what if we make you a silly game about crab? That's, yeah. that's a dark soul. And they literally made a video about that when they announced this game where they were like, okay, back to the crabs then. Yeah. <laughs> like, it seems uh, like you guys really want the crabs. Yeah. If you show so, a little gameplay, whoever it was. Yeah, it's been, yeah. Yeah, okay. If uh, whoever it was that was saying earlier, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can play Souls games, yeah. start with another crab's treasure. Yeah, honestly, it looks fun as hell. Start with that. Yeah. Let the let the crab of it, yeah. the cartoon crab of it, lull you into a false sense of security. So it is described as you play as a hermit crab who must wear whatever trash he can scavenge from the bottom of the ocean. The different trash home provides different protection as a little crab fights for treasure that will help him win back his repossessed shell. His shell got repoed. Yeah. It's still about capitalism. They're it's, like, it's we'll still, give you the crab if that's what you want. But we're still talking about But it's capitalism. crab with lesson. Yeah. Crabitalism. They say that eventually, on the evolutionary timeline, yeah, yeah. everything turns into crabitalism. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mother three. Mm -hmm. Everybody shut up. It's time to it's time to be serious. Okay. Earthbound mm -hmm. is one of the greatest games ever created. It's a beautiful game. Everybody should play it. If you have Switch Online, you can play it right now. Mm -hmm. Earthbound is, of course, Mother 2. Yep. Mother 3 has been out. Yeah. It was, it was been out. It's been over in Japan for a long time. Mm -hmm. The only way we've been able to play it is through uh, Clyde Mandolin and team's amazing, yeah. amazing translation patch for it, which right. I also recommend you play. But Nintendo doesn't want to give us Mother 3, except they keep giving Japan Mother 3. Yeah. Switch Online is getting Mother 3 in Japan. Yeah. Not us. No, still not an English version. Not us. No, so they're still not doing an English version of Mother 3 in this. Earthbound yeah. came to Virtual Console mm -hmm. with one of the biggest releases. We thought that they were remaking Earthbound yeah. because they made such a big deal of Earthbound coming to Virtual Console. Mm -hmm. They know how much people love Earthbound. Yeah. Let's bring out Mother 3 already. Yeah. Uh, they're worried. If you're wondering why we haven't gotten Mother 3, they're worried mm -hmm. about some some things. There are some things in there that are about uh that are about gender and sex that they think America cannot handle. Interesting. I don't know what those are. There is a uh, one of the main cannot handle or cannot not appropriate for children. Children shouldn't see that they're uh, children shouldn't know about genders. It's very Nintendo. It's very classic Nintendo. There it's is just a interesting because like Nintendo approving it for Japan. Japan has a very different idea about that sort of thing. Yeah. And particularly the character that is in Mother 3 mm -hmm. is, is presented as um, there is a, a village of men that mm -hmm. 
present feminine. That's all. But identify as men. They identify as men, but sure. they're very femme. Okay. Um, and that's their whole thing. And that's a thing that is that is a standard character type in Japan. Yeah. Like even in Breath of the Wild, uh, I don't know if you remember, but in Breath of the Wild, one of the construction guys, it might even be Hudson. Mm -hmm. Hudson presents kind of femme. Yeah. That's all over the Zelda games. But yeah. yeah. But like, yeah. But there's there's stuff about there's stuff where they talk about uh, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly there's stuff in Mother Three where they talk a little bit about why this why this uh, this town is like this yeah and how they find strength in this and they're afraid that family groups in America are not going to be cool with it. Here's the problem. So Alonzo said, "Yeah, this is a stereotype that's uh, uh, that is dated about America mm -hmm. now." But it's also, I want to say, it's not presented entirely positively right. in Japan either. Right. Sometimes these characters are presented as like, well, if they're femme, they've mm -hmm. got to be femme in like, I'm the gay character on a 70s sitcom sort of way. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got to be like very like, like rip torn flamboyant mm -hmm. about stuff. Um, and sometimes other characters will make jokes about that. Yeah. Um, which is also not great. No, but the character terrible. is presented as an important member of the party and uh, somebody who leads the party and teaches the kids to be heroes. It's such a bummer because I want to be like, "What do you mean? Like, we're progressive." Uh, and then uh, also know that realistically, if it were to gain mainstream success in America, uh, there would be terrible mm -hmm. groups of terrible parents that are all being vile and awful about it. But I think. I think we have to learn that those people are going to be those people no matter what the medium is, yeah. right? Um, well, there are there are parents that are just that are, that are like that were like fuck Steven Universe the whole way through Steven Universe. Yeah, absolutely. What is the name of the uh, of the woman on TikTok who is an amazing? She's on TikTok and YouTube, and she's an amazing preschool teacher. And people don't like her because she she talked about um, I don't sexuality or gender, and yeah. people were like oh no, she mentioned gender and now yeah. we have to remove her from life. Now, I do think that we need to learn that, but I also mm -hmm. think that we need to round up all of those people and throw them into a volcano. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I don't know. We could take either approach. But it's, you know, Nintendo is so, they're family friendly, right? They're for mm -hmm. everyone. Mario is for everyone. Yeah. And so, you know. It, well, except you could, for gay and genderqueer people. Right. Um, Noted. That's the thing. Mario can be for everyone uh -huh. because he's straight. Mm, Mario can be for everyone because he want to kiss a princess. Yeah, how interesting. Uh, Link, Link dresses. The thing that's crazy though is you're right in that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom mm -hmm. were the most forward Nintendo has taken anything like this. Yeah. Because when Link dresses like a Gerudo, mm -hmm. everybody talks about what, what a beautiful girl he is. Yeah. Everybody talks about how beautiful Link is. Love Gerudo Link. Gerudo Link is best Link. Yeah. Uh, and they're very, they don't play it up like a joke. Yeah. Link never responds to it like, you know no. what I mean? He never emotes. Hey, Anthony, yeah. remember that time that we played a costume Friday and we said we were doing DC characters and I showed up as Poison Ivy and you showed up as Gerudo Link because you forgot the theme? Yeah. I think, <laughs> hey, you know what? The theme that day, extra hot. The theme turned from DC characters into, this is a hot fucking day. He You're he, welcome. He said he was going to be the Flash. I do have a Flash suit. And then he walked in in a full Gerudo Link costume. Yeah. To my... Simply forgot the days. Yeah. To my house. And I was just like, okay, yeah. yeah. Simply forgot the days. <laughs> Looked great. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, bring Mother 3 to America. The time is now. Mm-hmm. The children are the future. Yeah. America can, will, and must blow up the moon. Yeah. Bring us Mother 3. Uh, we got a new, we got a new Vanillaware game, which I'm very excited about. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I love Vanillaware. You ever played anything, you ever played anything like the Odin Spheres? I have Or the Muramasas, the Demon Blades? No. Vanillaware is known for beautiful hand-painted fantasy games. Yeah. And I've been waiting on a new Vanillaware for a very mm -hmm. long time. The unfortunate thing for me is it's a tactics game and yeah. that's bumming me out because I don't do tactics really. Yeah, this is gorgeous, but not my speed in any way. Yeah, they're definitely uh, capitalizing on how much everybody loves the fire emblems right yeah, now. for sure. Uh, but it's a beautiful Vanillaware game and so I'll probably try to play it. Yeah. But look at that 2D animation. 
God, I love VanillaWare. It's really, really beautiful, and the detail in it is gorgeous. Play every VanillaWare game you can. All right. Uh, What did you think of Endless Ocean Luminous? Dude, I love Endless Ocean. Oh, my God. This is my nightmare. (laughs) This is, no, this was, I love this. There was a period right around, like, PS1, PS2, like, when we're straddling sort of that PS2 and Wii era, where, like, there were so many games about beautiful ocean exploration. Yeah. Endless Ocean is just, hey, dive around, see what's up in the ocean, take pictures, enjoy life, <sighs> explore the explore the calm beauty of the sea. But now you get to do it on the Switch. Multiplayer with up to 30 people. Multiplayer with 30 people, the ocean changes every time you play. Uh-huh. So you have a new map with new stuff to look at. Yeah. There are 500 creatures to find. I bet. That's beautiful. This is my relaxation game. I know this is not for you. This is the opposite of relaxation for me. I am deeply afraid of the ocean. A game like this, a game like Abzu, the worst thing that happened about Subnautica to me is like, I got so excited for Subnautica and then it's like, build a complicated base. And I was like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. I just want to swim around. Right. Uh, I love Endless Ocean. Everybody play Endless Ocean. Not for me. Not for me. (laughs) Uh, We got... The most, in my opinion, like <laughs> underwhelming update to the like online uh, old school Nintendo games. They put a collection of them that are uh, NES, SNES, and Nintendo 64. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Games from all three consoles. Let's see what we're getting. And they also announced that they're rare games too. They were like, hey, we're putting out a bunch of rare games. And so you're like, oh shit, rare yeah. rare. The best to ever do it for Nintendo. What are we getting? We got Battletoads, Battle Maniacs. Uh huh. Okay. Great. Killer Instinct. Okay, those are two really good rare SNES games. I've never been a Killer Instinct guy. Yeah. But fine. Great. Those I don't are really two, care. Those are two good yeah. games. But what else are we getting? Snake Rattle and Roll. Oh, eat shit. Blast Corpse. Now Blast Core is an underrated N64 classic, but it's not amazing. And then RC Pro Am Thirty. Two tracks of racing thrills. That is read. You read that like somebody who is too young to have ever played RC Pro Am, and I love that you read it that way. Yeah. Because RC Pro Am at this point really is that underwhelming. If you were to look at RC Pro Am right now. Yeah, I did. I watched the trailer. Yeah, that's not it. Yeah. The RC Pro Am is on there for, for, for parents who have kids that have a Switch and they go, oh shit, I remember RC Pro Am. But like what? Then you play it once. There's yeah. just better racing games now. This is the issue with the Nintendo, uh, with the Nintendo console online library. Uh huh. How are you releasing basically every fucking rare game that's ever come out for anything? And not any of the popular. And ones? we don't have we don't have Donkey Kong sixty four yet. Yeah. Wild. You're we don't out, have a we don't have the majority of great sixty four games. You're putting out Snake Rattle and Roll. So the only one Snake for- Snake Rattle and <laughs> Roll? What the fuck is that for? The only N64 game was Blast Core, yeah. uh, which I've never played, but like NES is before my time. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like we had an SNES, but even then it's like, look, that was my mom's console. Yeah. SNES was like, my mom was a young adult that had yeah. her SNES. We don't have, N- there's nothing new on the N64. We'll play some of mom's old games. Yeah. Yeah. So like all of this for me, I'm like, okay, sure, I guess. I you, And listen, I am not the, the on the young side of Switch users. No. <laughs> not even close. No. Battletoads is one of those things that uh that people people think they like because it's because it's a cool idea that's presented cool. Yeah. And then you play the games. Yeah. And you're like, this is why does this game hate me? Yeah. Why does this game hate me? Uh, Cass Thulu in the live studio audience said, I thought RC was boring when it first came out. RC pro was not, was not, was not the vibe. I had some <laughs> friends that were very into RC pro Yeah. Because I am of the age where I would have played RC pro RC mm-hmm. pro was basically rare ripping off an early arcade game that was called Off-Road. Okay. And the thing that was cool about Off-Road wasn't that it was four little cars going around a track on one little screen. Mm-hmm. The cool thing about Off-Road is it had steering wheels for four players. Yeah. And so you threw all your quarters into it as a dumb kid so you could play with the steering wheel. Right. Game wasn't that great. RC Pro-Am, 
It's fine. It's not that great. It's whatever. It's not that great. There's so many Mario Karts. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> we, of course, talked about Epic Mickey rebrushed yeah. already. We could, we could show a little bit of those Epic Mickey graphics, though, if you want to, Alex. I know you want to. Show a little bit of those Epic Epic Mickey graphics. Yeah, it's a four minute video on it. Yeah, cut cut to like the cut to like the middle where they show some of that good new shit. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, the intro's been totally redone, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look like an AI upscale either. That looks like they redid the intro, which yeah. is nice. Um, I feel like when you call something like Epic Mickey rebrushed, it means that you basically are, it's a remake remake, yeah, not just an upscale, you know? Yeah, they did a they did a good remake. But even with a lot of these remakes, mm -hmm. you'll get to, Alex, I know, but you got to skip this cinematic, go to the gameplay. I know. <laughs> There's no get to, Is there gameplay. no gameplay? Cut to, yeah, cut to the middle of it then so we can That's, see some of the more of the real time stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like towards the end here, but um, there's no gameplay. It's all cinematic. Yeah. Uh, That's all we're getting right now. At the very, very end yeah, of the Yeah, towards the, the end, you get some more real time stuff and it looks really, really good. Yeah. They didn't have to do this. They could have AI upscaled the opening. Mm -hmm. I think by showing us that they they completely redid the opening, they're letting us know. That they're reviving the franchise. This, I think so too. I don't know that they're reviving I the think franchise. That they're giving it a good go at it. Yeah. Though. I think putting this much work into a, a remake. Yeah, they're letting us know that they. Is opening the door for They it. did the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, we've been talking about the rumors of this for a while, of the games that were previously Xbox exclusives that were coming to other consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are getting grounded. There was a few others. I'm trying to find the list of it. Um, grounded and Pentiment are uh, both coming to Switch, which were uh, which are the first Xbox exclusive exclusive games to now be on the Nintendo Switch. Right. Uh, the Verge. Uh, the Verge revealed that the uh, the four games as far as they know, based on internal stuff. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, Grounded, Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, and Sea of Thieves. Ooh. Sea of Thieves running on the Switch sounds difficult. Yeah, that water's not going to look great. That's going to, it just sounds like a difficult um, well, uh, a thing to We just know that those are the four games that are coming to rival consoles. Yeah. If Sea of Thieves misses the Switch, it misses the Switch. You and know? I'm fine with that. Grounded is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to see Microsoft use... You know how we're always talking about cloud versions of games? Yeah. It'd be interesting to see Microsoft use the Xbox cloud mm. to push Sea of Thieves to Switch. I'd love it. I think that'd be cool. I'd have a great time with because it. Because Sea of Thieves, unlike the other cloud games that you mm -hmm. have to pay to own, yeah. Sea of Thieves is free free to play. Yeah. So I don't mind them pushing it that way. Yeah. I mind when they're like, get Resident Evil on the Switch. It's the cloud version. Pay $60. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a lot of people are talking about that apparently the trailer leaked a little bit early for Hi-Fi Rush on the PS5 today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so we don't have an announcement for that coming to Switch, but that is rumored to be just coming to rival consoles. Uh, Grounded looks fun. Mm -hmm. I still have not jumped into Grounded, but it's, 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 it's survival, honey. I shrunk the kids. Yeah, super cute. I like it. Super, super cute. Um, while we're talking about some of these classic Nintendo games, let's continue on a, a, a classic game here. Let's Just talk a about tiny game. update. We talked about the fact that they are rebooting Crazy Taxi. Right? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Crazy I, money. My brain instantly goes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought they were just rebooting it inside of Yakuza. I thought they would just put yeah. it in Like a Dragon. Right, which also did happen. However, they are actually rebooting it. And they're saying... It's going to be a triple A game. Sega, now, you don't know what that means that's anymore. That's the thing. Sega, that's the problem is you don't know what triple A game means Somebody's anymore. Somebody's got to check Sega on the things that they say because Sega does just go out there and say shit. You can't say shit. They're just out here saying shit. Sega, I love you. You can't just say shit like this. You can't like just this. be saying shit. What do so you they're think saying is gonna it's make a triple A game. What is going to make Crazy Taxi a triple A game? What are you adding to Crazy Taxi? It's probably got cover shooting now. <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> crazy taxi what if they oh sage i just thought of it what are you ready what do you know how they would make this kind of triple a and make it for sages you don't just drive one taxi sage uh -huh. you run the taxi manage fleet. company manage you, a fleet you manage the fleet you have to move into new neighborhoods and areas you have to like keep your employees happy give me that disney.com hotshot business Put into crazy taxi. That's right. And anytime you want, you can jump into crazy taxi mode. Yeah. And make money for your business. Uh, I love it. That's basically house flipper. That's mm -hmm. how house flipper runs. With a taxi? Well, you go into like actually going and cleaning houses versus like buying and selling. Oh, right, right, right. 
It has the management area. level yeah. and then yeah, 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 yeah. the cleaning level. No taxis. No taxis. Yet. I don't know. I'm only a few. I'm only a few hours in. Uh, give, what did they say about this? So this here's is the wild. thing. Here's what's interesting about it is they aren't like we're going to make Crazy Taxi a AAA franchise. Now they're saying we're participating in the development of AAA titles, including Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi Which makes was me think they think it's always been AAA. Yeah. No, Crazy Taxi was an arcade game. The the reason your console failed. Look at Alex, please, right here. <laughs> Sega. The reason the Dreamcast failed when you set it up to win, the reason your $99 console failed is because you thought shit like Crazy Taxi was AAA. You kept thinking that arcade games that were made to eat quarters were good games for the home while everybody was playing Final Fantasy XII. Get your shit together. Come on. Now, you had entire generations where you <laughs> skipped Sonic on your consoles. <laughs> what are you doing? Crazy Taxi was AAA. Look, I love Crazy Taxi. I love it. I love it. It's not a AAA game. You gotta calm down. I also had it on the Dreamcast. Loved it. Not AAA title. It just simply isn't. And that's okay. <sighs> uh, let's talk about Borderlands. Yeah, let's talk about Borderlands. So... We got some first looks at the Borderlands uh, movie that is to come. We got some very, I would call them very sparing first looks. Yeah. Uh, first of all, people mm -hmm. released their exclusives. First images from the Borderlands movie. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, one tiny picture of the main cast and one, well, honestly, I'm just going to ask literally everybody of all sexualities mm -hmm. and all genders, are we all okay after this picture of Kate Blanchett no, as Lilith? No, no, not How okay. are we doing? Damn, Kate Blanchett. Did we all take a cold shower this morning? Damn, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett as Lilith is like, whoa. Yeah, there is something like. It's like when she was in the suits in Ocean's 8. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Tough Kate Blanchett mm -hmm. is like, it's. it's Undeniable. You, yeah. You simply can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if tough looking Kate Blanchett, and she doesn't have to do anything tough. Nope. If tough looking Kate Blanchett walked up and was like, I'm so sorry, my car is out of gas. Can I have yours? Of course. I don't have a car anymore. Yeah, my manners get better when I see a photo of Kate Blanchett. Yeah, I immediately <laughs> sat up straighter. Yeah. My posture's better. Right. <laughs> I just wanna do, I wanna do well. She looks so cool. She looks so cool. Um, the other cast are also there. Yeah. And they look, they do look good. Yeah. This looks like a Borderlands movie. It looks really cool. I uh, actually really like that photo. Of course, I think it looks we've really got, great. Uh, we've got Kevin Hart as Roland. We've mm -hmm. got uh, Ariana Greenblatt as Tiny Tina. Yeah. Um, I forget the name of the doctor that that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is playing. Uh, I'm not a, Tannis. Tannis. I'm not a I'm not a big Borderlands head. Like yeah. I played a lot of it, but yeah. many many moons ago. Yeah. And then uh, we have Claptrap, which is Jack Black. Jack Black. If it's a video see, game, baby, you get Jack Black in there. Yeah. Jablinski games all across the board. Yeah. He's a Minecraft. He's yeah. a Claptrap. Yeah. He's a Bowser. Yeah. We love it. And so far, so good. Yeah. It, lo it all looks very, very good. I think that it looks great. We also got the poster, mm -hmm. um, which I was surprised to not see circulating more, actually. Um, so the actual poster for it, which, what did you think of the poster? I think it looks good. It says, I, Chaos Loves Company, Borderlands, from the producer of Uncharted, Spider-Man, and Venom. That's that's bold. <laughs> hey, y'all, that's bold. You do, you should just put Spider-Man on there and keep your mouth shut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think the poster list, looks great. You could also list, like, well, I guess you don't want to list Eli Roth because he's so directly connected with horror mm. that if you put Eli Roth on, if you were, like, from the director of all you could really list with Eli Roth is, is like horror. horror. Yeah. And you don't want people to think Borderlands is a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, but Eli Roth, good. I think good director for Borderlands. Yeah. I think this looks really, really cute and fun. And Borderlands is a franchise that I really, really like, but I am mm. not super protective over. Yeah. So it sits in a really great place for me of like, there are things that are like cheesy about Borderlands. And I really do love like, I love the art style. I love the games. I've played so much Borderlands 3. Yeah. It's a game that I come back to regularly. And it's like, 
it's a game that doesn't take itself seriously. So it's a little easy to get right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're sitting in a place where it's like, as long as you get the basic idea of Borderlands humor and you let this be fun, it's going to be fun. Like it's going to be a good time and that's all I need it to be. Yeah. It's It's going to meet my expectations. It's guns and one liners. Yeah. And I believe in all of these people to do guns and one liners. Hollywood can do guns and one liners. This Mm -hmm. is not a stretch. Um, And then it's like, Oh, but it's like watching a fun little action movie and getting to go, I know that. Yeah. Oh, I know that character. So I've been there. So something that we know is that this is the first Borderlands. So mm-hmm. we're talking about uh, Atlas. Yeah. Obviously. Um, they've listed some of the other characters that are going to be in the film. I'm not going to mm-hmm. I'm not gonna get into them because it's kind of spoilery territory. Yeah. But if your favorite Borderlands is two, if yeah. you're a handsome Jack person or anything mm-hmm. like that, um, you're not going to get that in this one. Yeah. This is border. This is the first Borderlands. Yeah. Um, so cool. Yeah. And I think it's going to be fun. I think so too. I'm looking forward to it. And so far, I mean, look, we're not seeing much, but fun. I look, we've got to get a trailer. Can I tell you, then. I love a, I love a five, five Roland. Yeah. I love that. It's, I love that. It's Kevin Hart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love a, I love a five foot five inch Roland. Yeah. That's great. Um, do what do you think? Do you think we get a trailer soon? I think if we're getting all of these images, they're releasing releasing exclusives yeah, to people. Yeah, ta- trailer actually dropped. Trailer yeah, just dropped. Out. It dropped. When? Yeah, IGN just now? had the IGN had the uh, the exclusive. It was not out when I was putting stories in this morning, <laughs> right? One hour ago, it dropped. One hour ago. Yeah. Well, shit. Do you want to watch the, a little bit of the trailer? We can't show much of it because we'll get um, most likely a takedown for it. Yeah, we don't uh, we don't go to prison for Borderlands. No. Ooh, we can watch a little bit. Yeah, we can watch a little bit. Um, why don't we? I'll just put it on my screen so I can like skip around on it a little bit. Well, I think my thing was the the thing that oh. I put in right before the show was the sneak peek of the trailer because that was all and that was out before we went tomorrow. live. Okay, hold on. Yeah. No, no, no. We know we have the full one. I'm just saying, yeah, like, yeah. okay. The the most I had before we went I have live it pulled up now was a <gasps> preview of the trailer of the preview. Hey guys, if you thought the photo of Kate Blanchett, the opening of this trailer, are you joking? Oh no. Are you kidding me? Oh no. God, I'm so gay. Wow. Oh, and it's using it's using the style of the original trailers. Yeah. Shout out to Mikey Newman, creator and director of those original trailers. Okay, so this is where that photo comes from. Would you look at that? A ladder. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have to skip around a little bit. Yeah. It's the rules. We have to. We're still, honestly, we we wish we could watch the trailer with you. Yeah. But we're literally, we're in escrow. <laughs> like we bought a house. Yeah. We're in escrow with a bunch of different companies over trailers that we've shown before. Everyone looks amazing. Everybody looks great. God. Fucking 10 out of 10 to the costume department. Oh my Lord. I mean, it looks like they did a lot of physical sets. Oh, and, ter- and, and Ariana Greenblatt is Tiny Tina, just looks flipping amazing. around, screaming, screaming out at people. Oh, this is a good looking movie. Shit, this is a good trailer. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, oh, okay. that's Gina Gershon uh-huh. as Moxie. We got, a, we got a Gershon as Moxie shot. Yeah, a very, very brief one. I'm trying to go back to it so you can see it. God. Oh, uh, love, love. So good. Okay, and okay. we're watching it silently, which is not giving the full effect because again, we're and trying al- not to get a takedown. And it also doesn't stop us from getting the takedown. Right, we're still gonna get it, most likely. Dude, um, Gershon is Moxie. Oh. When they announced that, I was like, that's gonna be good. Dude, it looks but like- seeing it? <sighs> looks like she walked literally out of the video game. Yeah. Like, fuck. This is this is gonna be a movie. Visually looks incredible. Yeah. Um, we'll watch the whole trailer uh after the show because wow. Um, I'm excited. That looks incredible. Ooh, that's good. Do we have a release date on there? I bet we do. I bet we got something at least close to it. Just uh, coming soon. Damn. Yeah, just coming soon. Damn. Nothing. Not even a. Not even a like a window. No, it's just soon. It's soon. <sighs> before it was before it was later, and now it's soon. Soon it'll be now, Damn. and then we'll have it. Yeah, think about that. Um, uh, don't look at the comments on YouTube trailers ever. People are so weird, especially yeah. in the early bits of a trailer. It's like, well, we should have Idris Elba playing role. Shut up, shut up. It's shut Kevin up. Hart. Um, <laughs> shut, up. shut up. It's Kevin Hart. It's gonna be good. Uh, in addition to this, uh-huh. obviously, Gearbox 
you'd think Gearbox must have something going on, yeah. right? If you, they got this big movie coming out. What yeah. are they going to do? Uh, Randall Pitchford mm -hmm. um, <laughs> has been uh, talking and the Gearbox account has been tweeting and what they've been doing is the Borderlands account has been basically every week uh, reposting the story so far trailers from each Borderlands game once a week. Uh, and what Randall Pitchford is saying is, uh, look, we haven't announced anything of what we're working on yet. Clearly, we're working on something, and I know what we're working on, and holy shit, it's the greatest thing we've ever done, and I can't wait, but it's not time yet. It's not time yet. There will be a time. For every season. Uh-huh. Turn, turn, turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, Skywalker posed a great point, said, Tiny Tina's Wonderland show, when? Did you play any of Tiny Tina's? Uh, I watched some people play it, but I didn't play it. Loved it. Because I, I didn't do Borderlands 3 either. Oh, God. Okay, uh, three is actually the only Borderlands I've played the majority of. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I've touched the others, but mm -hmm. I don't consider myself to have played them. But like, I played the shit out of three, and Tiny Tina's Wonderland is so fun. Yeah, it's it a looks really fun. great game. It has like all Borderlands have cringy humor moments. Oh yeah, um, but like Tiny Tina's was so such a fun game. I didn't play that big DLC they did for it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's besides the point. This looks super fun and great. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, I would imagine that if not, if not a Borderlands Four, mm -hmm. I mean, the smartest thing would be for Gearbox to come out with Borderlands Four alongside this movie. Yes, that would be the thing that they could do. Which because how I many bet. how many times have they remastered, re-released Borderlands? Yeah. What else would he call like the best thing we've ever done? Duke Nukem, even forever, ever. The Foreverist. Yeah. Forever in Duke, your heart? Duke, Duke is Nukem? In your heart? Maybe. Battleborn Battle 2? <laughs> <laughs> the best thing they've ever done. Um, yeah. If it's not a mainline Borderlands, it will probably be, because so many people love Tiny Tina, Yeah, it'll probably be another Tiny Tina game. Because it also looks from that trailer like they know uh, mm -hmm. Tiny Tina is, is a big deal. Yeah. Little Tina Big World is what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. That's what they say. Uh, I feel like one last piece of games news. Yeah. And this is really a little bit niche for Sages, but Killer Clowns from Outer Space, June release date. I put that in for you. Thank you so much, bless. Uh, I love Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, recently, I redid my stream backdrop and I have one of the cotton candy guns from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I remember, and, yeah. And uh, most, my most frequent question is people being like, what is that? It's the cotton candy gun. You, you take horny teenagers face. and you wrap them up in cotton candy like a cocoon. I love killer clowns. I'm a clown girl in general. I now, love clowns. Uh, now this is from Ilphonic. Ilphonic, you uh, you might know from uh, basically, you know, uh, I just spaced. Yeah, your brain just turned off in the middle there. My brain just spaced. Uh, I know they made the they made the Ghostbusters multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. uh, what else did they do? I don't know. They made games. Now, does this game look amazing? No. Uh, uh, does it look oh, the most original? Oh, they did Predator Hunting Grounds, and they also did- The Shutdown Friday the 13th The Shutdown game. Friday the 13th game. Predator That's Hunting why. Grounds was really fun, mm -hmm. but didn't have enough people playing it to have a good time in it. The Friday the 13th game was great before was uh, all of the like legal troubles with it. So uh, this is another asymmetrical multiplayer. Uh, this is going to play like your- Dead by Daylight in, in the genre. Your Ghostbusters, your Friday the 13th, your Ilphonic games. They do make games. one kind of game. Yeah. They do make one kind of game. Uh, so it is kind of same game, uh, different theme. And I am I will admit that I'm like a little tired of asymmetrical well, multiplayer yeah, in this particular style. And it's got the problem that all of these games have that we talk about every time it gets brought up, which is... If all of your friends are playing Dead by Daylight, yeah. or all of your friends are playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. or whatever it is they're playing, is everybody really going to jump ship for Killer Clowns from Outer Space? No. And are they going to jump ship forever? Is this game going to be like, well, we're all jumping ship from Dead by Daylight, and this game is better? Are we jumping ship from uh, yeah. from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and this game is better, and so we're going to stay with it? Here's the problem, too, Anthony. As a huge Killer Clowns from Outer Space fan, the world is so normal in this game, it looks like Dead by Daylight. Like, the whole world is just like a normal human world, and we're not getting into the, like, 
clown houses and weird like fun houses of killer clowns. I, you know, I would be surprised if there wasn't a map or two that they're not showing us of that yet. But weird that they're not showing us that yet. Yeah. It comes out in June. I don't know. I think that I think the trick. I lead thing with that is if you don't know killer clowns from outer space, which a uh -huh. lot of people don't, right? Yeah. yeah. But you know, like people who are playing an asymmetrical mm -hmm. horror game right now, yeah, for recognition's sake, are playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. People who are playing just because they love the asymmetric horror of it all, uh -huh. that still has a lot of characters you recognize. Yes. Dead by Daylight. What does Killer Clowns have except for the silly look of Killer Clowns? Which love. Which is but which, but it's not thing. for everyone. And if you didn't set up the world to be different, right? You didn't give us an alien space clown world that mm -hmm. we're playing in. Why didn't you just do a collab with Dead by Daylight and put them in as killers? I think, well, I think probably because Ilphonic licensed it first. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like if I'm not getting a world that's interesting and so yeah. far the maps just look like literally normal maps. I wonder, like they look so generic to me. I wonder if they're not trying to show mostly normal maps because yeah. they are worried that the aesthetic, the sci-fi funhouse aesthetic uh -huh. will not be for everyone. But they, But you can say to most people because of, you know, Steam asset flip streamer popular horror games. Yeah. You can be like, it's a regular world, but creepy clowns pop up and people go, oh yeah, cool. I think I, they I think they believe it gets more notice ugh. than killer. But like clowns then does. you're just blending in. Then you're just competing with all the others. You could be the the best of your weird thing. It's a weird license. It's genuinely a weird license. And I understand why they didn't do anything else, else with it. Killer clowns? Because for because for Ilphonic, yeah. they've got the tech already to make this game. Yeah. I don't want to see an asymmetric killer clowns. I think I think like a first person survival horror killer clowns is yeah. much more fun. But I can understand why you don't want to put all the money into that with this license. I think it's a tricky license. I think that um, I exist in an echo chamber because so many of my friends also love killer clowns from outer space. Oh, but I'm same. like, everyone loves killer clowns from outer space. Sure. Everyone knows and loves it. All 12 of us. Yeah. And then it's also like, I'm like, is this like them doing a Mars Attacks game? Mm -hmm. Like, is this like somebody being like, we licensed for Mars Attacks? It is. It's Another probably, one of those niche things that only my friends like. It's probably less recognizable than Mars Attacks because really? Mars Attacks was a major release Tim Burton theatrical movie. Killer Clowns from Outer Space was a B movie that most people saw on, on cable. Damn. Like. Damn. Yeah. Wow, it's, okay, noted. But it's interesting that it's coming, you yeah. know? Yeah, um, all right. I uh, uh, Continuing games news, because we teased it. I just wanna get through everything we teased in the intro at least. Yeah. Lady Gaga's coming to Fortnite. Lady Gaga Fortnite. Uh, she previously had put out a tweet that said, what's Fortnite back in, what year was that tweet? Let's that see. That tweet was in 2019. 2019. That was October of 2019. And she spelled it incorrectly. She said, what's Fortnite spelled N-I-G-H-T. And to announce her new character, she tweeted out, Yesterday, asterisk, Fortnite spelled the correct way. With an image of her in Fortnite. She did it. Lady Cong Gaga Fortnite. And congrats. We honestly, we have talked about this. We've been like, where is she? Weird that she wasn't already in Fortnite. Yeah. I Probably because she didn't know what it was. Yeah, I think she was holding out. I think she was holding out for that big Fortnite money. Yeah, maybe that's it. Okay. Last thing that we teased Lady in Gaga the intro. Lady Gaga Fortnite. Last thing that we teased in the intro is Mr. Beast. Yeah, so that's I'd true. Like, I'd like to end on that story. Mr. Beast reportedly is going to Walmarts and Targets and helping restock his candy bars. Which means Mr. Beast is walking up to Target employees and uh -huh. Walmart employees and going, yeah. excuse me, I'm James Beasterson. Uh -huh. You're supposed to have my candy bars out on the shelf. Go get my candy bars and put them out on the shelf. Now, you might be thinking, whoa, you guys, why would you assume he's doing that it that way? And I'd like to take us back down memory lane to Mr. Beast tweeting out to all of his fans uh, how upset he was that the displays for his candy bars were not properly organized and that if they see his candy bars in a Walmart, they should reorganize the display to make it look nice, to freshen it up and make it look nice, Yeah, which is fucking weird. Hey, f hey fam. Do me a favor and make sure all our stock is front facing because that's yeah. what true bros do. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Get fucked. 
So I'm like parent tweeted at him and was like, I've been to three Walmarts and your candy bars are out of stock. And he was like, I spent 15 hours yesterday visiting Walmarts and Targets and seeing if they had inventory in the back and helping them put it out. The store was doing zero sales when I visited. It had zero product on shelf. I found these in the back room and had them scan them in. I placed them on the shelf. The store started selling a bar an hour. Ha ha. Most products don't have velocities like ours. So you have to stock the shelves more frequently or they sit empty. People don't have any, uh, and people don't have anything to buy. Learning a lot. Now, okay. There are, there are two ways to look at this. One way is, Mr. Beast is uh, a company owner. Probably any unsold stock that isn't sold by X amount of time gets shipped back to him or written off. That's the way a lot of these large, uh, large big box stores do. Yeah. Uh, so going around or hiring somebody to go around and be like, hey, it's me from Feastables. I'm your Feastables rep. I just want to see if you're having any, tr- any trouble, if there's anything we can do. Are you facing the product? Can I help you with it? Yeah. James Beast, Jimmy... Apartheid Donaldson yeah. <laughs> is running around literally bothering people and telling them, you got to go in the back and stock my shit right now. Now, right now. keep in mind that if you're working at a Target mm-hmm. or a Walmart, uh-huh. you are Especially Walmart. constantly restocking things. Yeah. You're constantly helping out customers. Mm-hmm. You're constantly running around doing everything on the floor because they are staffing yeah. these stores less and less and asking people to do more and more. If your stuff isn't isn't stocked right now. Yeah. It's not because they're not going to restock it or they haven't restocked it. Yeah. It's probably because the stockists are doing something else. Correct. Uh, Kotoroku said, going around and doing it yourself is pressuring minimum wage employees with your internet fame. Mm -hmm. Correct, because they're going to respond differently to him than they are to a representative for the brand. That's right. And he knows that and he's using that. Alonzo pointed out that all of these tweets sound exactly like something Elon Musk would say. Yes. His cadence has become so Elon Musk, it's freaky. We know how much he loves Elon Musk. He's simping so hard, but like, all of these, like he breaks down, like, look at that. We went three days with no sales and then we sold 10. Like, we don't give a shit. Like, I don't understand why you think everyone cares about your business. Like you can talk about your candy bars, but mm-hmm. like to talk about like, isn't it ridiculous that I didn't have any sales for a few days? Like no one cares. That's so weird. Why here's do you think the other, people care? Here's the other thing that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna point out. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're stock, if you're restocking a busy Walmart, yeah, and you have the chance to restock big ticket items that sell quickly, yeah, that have much larger uh, margins on them that you yeah. make more money on. Mm-hmm. I used to stock shelves. They tell you where to go and what to do first. Correct. Stocking a candy bar, yeah, that you probably make very little money on. Yeah, Walmart doesn't care. Walmart's gonna get to your candy bar when they get to and it. And not to mention all of this is because he's like, and then we sold ten in a day, like. For a Walmart or a Target, 10 items is not like, and he's like, most things don't sell at the volume that we do. So like, you really got to restock us more. Hey, 10 for 10 candy bars? They're candy bars. And it says 10, he showed the graph. I'd like to see how much, how many like M&Ms or Hershey's they sell in a day. Correct. Like that's so fucking How many Kit weird, Kats dude. do they sell in like, a day? Like he is just becoming such a like like he doesn't come across like a fucking human dude, at all. Why are why are like okay, rich people run everything. Why do they also have to become annoying pests about it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like why why is this Elon Musk school mm-hmm. of thought passing where it's like I'm not just making the most money. I also have to just constantly be poking you in the shoulder asking you why I'm not making it's so making freaky. the money I want to make. Like, it's so freaky to me and so fucking weird. And it's just like, man, why do you think your candy bars are special? Go Those away. candy bars. Like, leave people alone and let them do their fucking jobs so that you specifically get to sell your 10 candy bars. Like, ick, I hate it. It's so weird. A bunch of people have come out recently and talked about um, their experiences working for Mr. Beast, mm-hmm. by the way. Who tried to build a company town. Mm-hmm and put them all in a cul-de-sac with him. Yep. So they could never get away from him. Yeah. Because they're all one big happy family. Uh, and except, as, for, except for this editor that ran away. Yeah, so <laughs> most people have talked about really poor working conditions and extremely being overworked. Uh, they said that like, it's not like he's like 
a mean guy to them. It's that his standards are astronomically and unreachably high. And the amount of like crunch and work that he puts on his employees uh, is absolutely backbreaking. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a very nice way of saying, please don't sue me. Uh, I'm not saying you're mean. I'm saying the work was too hard for me. Yeah, he's, listen, all of his, like a lot of his like philanthropical stuff, the things that he does, Yeah, there have been people that have showed up to places where he shot videos before, mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I put, I gave someone an island or I made somebody live on an island for a week. Yeah. Uh, people will show up. There was like a guy who was like ex-Coast Guard who was like on his ship. Right. Uh, he was on his boat and he passed this island. And he was like, oh, this is the island from the Mr. Beast video. It was covered in trash. And he's like, hey, do you, are you? Do you want us to pick this up? This you? So it doesn't go into the ocean, and so it's not unsafe. And we'll pick it up because we're already out here. And that's the sort of thing that you're supposed to do when you're a responsible uh, hey, uh, person on a boat. Uh, just like, wondering. Just wondering. Yeah. Just wondering. Uh, they're the weird, like, he's he's got connections to Peter Thiel. He's got connections to Elon Musk. It's yeah. like very, he's a weird dude. This editor who left was just like, I have never been more stressed in my life. I've never felt more more horrible about myself in my life. Yeah. And I was not a new editor. I've done this before. Yeah. Like, just... Like, I think that in the future, there is a really freaky expose documentary on this guy. Oh, for that sure. is about, like, just the most unhinged business dealings. Because, again, we keep noticing things where people are like, but he did so much good. Look at these, like, things that he did for, like, deaf kids to get, you know, these implants. And then he it's invested. like, yeah, he, oh, he, he owns a majority share in that company. That's promotional He's work for advertising. Him. The, He's doing big pharma. If <laughs> like, YouTube was covered by the FTC the way television is, yeah. he would not have been allowed to make that video. Correct. Like that's just people getting into the medical industry because it's highly profitable in America. It, it really does mirror the early Elon Musk stuff of look at all the good he's doing. Oh yeah, it's just or like, like look at his cool flamethrower. Yeah, like he's fun and funny and yeah. he's doing cool stuff. God, he was never fun or funny and neither is Mr. Beast. Yeah, it's, um, people can do very good things. Yeah. Especially when those very good things only require giving a percentage of their money uh, that don't make them automatically good people. One of the things that we have in the United States is a history of large public areas, parks, museums, universities that all have names of literal robber barons on them. Yeah. Like, oh, thank you so much for making this for us, Rockefeller. Right. Oh, you mean you mean JD Rockefeller? Are you sure? Are you sure? You mean the are you talking about the Gettys? You want to talk about like how lovely the Gettys are? You do? Are you sure? Do I don't want to read something first. Because their name's on a museum. It's a lovely museum. But do you know why they had to buy a museum? Do you know why they have to look that good publicly? Yeah, yeah very interesting. I do think that there's going to be um, there's going to be a very strange time where we look back at this and go like, oh, that was freaky. Yeah. And we let that happen for a long time. And under the guise of like a YouTuber, under you know, the guise of the word YouTuber. Dude, it always is. It always is. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but yesterday, Shanspeare dropped a video about family family vloggers. Yeah, I love Shanspeare. The history of family vloggers. Ooh, I watched it. And I remember like the whole time family vloggers were big, I was like, this can't be happening. Yeah, so one of the stories that they opened up with was about a girl who was very, very Tumblr famous. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were very considerate to actually not mention this woman by name yeah. because they were underage in the majority of the stories and are now still a public figure uh, yeah. that is very hated on the internet. I actually knew that girl mm. during all of it. Uh, very strange growing up in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, very strange. Anyways, that's all besides the point. That is, I believe, all of the show that we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us and spending your morning with us. There's a bunch of ways that you can support the show. You can check out patreon.com slash pixel circus. There is so much content on the Patreon this week. Uh, there's like an absurd amount of stuff on the Patreon. We did an hour and 22 minute review of Madam Web. Really freaking broke it down. Yeah. Uh, I put up two extra. Because there's a lot of Madam Web that you probably wouldn't understand unless we like got really into it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's a very deep film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have two additional bonus videos from our recent YouTube video exposing our exes. Uh, deleted questions, just fun behind the scenes moments mm -hmm. that are both up on the Patreon right now. And you should check this out. Where they out. name the exes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Name reveals. <laughs> 
Uh, you can also join the Discord, which is completely free. You can just tell friends about the show, which is also free. And hey, there are ways to support here during the show. Uh, we always have our monthly sugar breakfast goal running. If you uh, choose to support live during the show, that little bar goes up and it helps us to do things like eat. It's dope. That's right. Yeah. Uh, there are other ways to support us, you know, other than the Patreon and during the show. You mm -hmm. can... You can be tweeting. You can be sharing the show with friends. We really love it when you head over to the YouTube channel and yeah. uh, and like and subscribe over at YouTube. We know. We know. But just come on. Go do it. Thank you. It's very helpful go in the it. algorithm. It's so helpful. Yeah, genuinely. Can... We've, we've, we're like watching it like it's happen. really working. It's really great. Thank you. Uh, you can go into Walmart and tidy up the display of our uh, chocolate bar. Yeah. If you want to come by my place and, and just tidy do my dishes. Bit. Yeah. I've got laundry that just needs to be folded. It's all clean. Yeah. But if you could just fold it for me, that'd yeah. be dope. Thank you so much. Hey, Sage, when you're not here, yeah. what are you doing? You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I stream on my channel Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be playing, I'm going to be continuing a horror game I started last night. Okay. So come by and check out some some creepy times. Cool. How about you? Uh, you can find me everywhere at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch. I'm at Anthony Carboni. And uh, yeah, that's all. How about you, Alex? Hello, I'm Alex. You can find me on Twitter at Alder underscore Mancy. And I'm going to be back on Total Party Kiss this weekend playing some more queer horror D&D &D, Saturday morning. Woo! Woo!